Hey, very good morning, good afternoon, good evening. My name is Sean. This is Alex. And you're listening to another episode of Kosher Kings, Kings Radio. Radio. Today's episode, we'll be discussing Hollywood in Germany. Moon Park, Park Germany, <laughs> which is uh, one of my childhood theme parks. Um, I would say, to me, that was Disney World when I was a kid. We lived about 45 minutes away from the park in, uh, in the Netherlands, and this is obviously in Germany. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, it, you know, it was quite close for us. This was kind of like the big, close theme park that my family always enjoyed going to. Back in its uh, Warner Brothers days, you know, it was kind of our first exposure to, like, a, a modern IP franchise kind of heavy theme park. Gremlins... Um, never ending story never ending story all the Looney Tunes those are kind of like our big lethal weapon Batman <laughs> all that court. yeah Batman, and then of course yeah. there was uh, Eraser so there was quite a bit going on that was definitely um, pop media big IPs the Warner Brothers name always helped as well mm-hmm. so um, years later obviously I've kind of witnessed it's going down into the movie park phase when it Lost their licensing, uh, became part of Star Parks for a couple of years. We did an episode on Cop Car Chase, kind of diving into the Star Parks operational that issues was, a little bit that more. Was a fun episode. That was a good episode. Um, and then, a lot you to know, talk about with Cop Car I've Chase. seen it kind of come back up when they added Nick Land, which was a, which is a big deal for them. That really was kind of their their first upswing back. Um, they, you know, they had the Ice Age ride. Nick Land is like it could be its own park. Like, oh it's yeah, so it's huge. it's pretty much the size of the Mall of America, Nick Land, yeah. or non Nickelodeon yeah, Universe, oh, totally. yeah. And I mean, it has two roller coasters, which is so four now. Well, three, I guess. Still, the uh, we'll get into it a little yeah. bit later. Um, and then I saw them adding uh, Fun Housing's Factory. That was, that was you know a, a good time. And I think years later now we have Star Trek. We have all sorts of revamped dark rides. So um, the park is in a much better, much better place. Their roster than it was. is strong. Yeah, I really like, think it it's one of the most strong. underrated parks. I mean, again, I have a little bit of bias here because I. Love move parks so much, but I just think in general, it's one of the stronger parks in Germany. Like, people can say what they want about the park and the coaster lineup or whatever, but I feel like they're, they're right. Like, their top five, which is, I would say, comprised of their three signature roller coasters... And the two major water rides with their dark ride sequences, that is a top five that is hard to beat um, among the, like, among the, the contemporaries... Um, in Europe, I would say that it's right up there with easily, I mean, probably more so even than Europa Park, right up there with Fantasyland, Efteling, Disneyland Paris in terms of, like, their their star five attractions, so. Yeah, the nice thing about this park is uh, it's focused on theming, which, of course, a lot of European parks focus on theming, but this is uh, one of those parks that kind of brings a little bit of Hollywoodish, kind of Americanized um, theming to Europe, which is different in Europe. It doesn't feel like, you know, all the King's Island and Sea Fair and Universal Parks and Disney Park. It, you know, it's kind of its own thing, which is nice. So I think what we're going to do this. We're going to do a little tour around the park, kind of highlight some of the major attractions that mm-hmm. I think you should be aware of. And we will finish probably with the uh, Movie Park Studios Studio Tour roller coaster. That is the newest roller coaster in the park. And Alex, favorite it's my in favorite Germany ride still there, and it's easily my favorite, favorite coaster. coaster in Germany. It's, it's that good. Not it's to, actually really not impressive. to be dramatic, but like I am so crazy about that. I mean, well, you can see my reaction in the vlog was very organic. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. I was like speechless. So yeah, definitely hit up our Glee. YouTube channel <laughs> and find the Move Park Germany vlog. It's the title, the Hollywood in Germany. Definitely check it out because uh, it's definitely a good vlog. It's kind of lengthy, shows all the park. Uh, we had a really great time, so it was fun putting that vlog together for sure. Uh, but yeah, let's go inside the park. So it's classic Art Deco entrance. Uh, when you enter the park, there's a fountain with a film reel that um, has the Move Park logo on it. And, and then right behind framed it. framed so nicely. It's framed by the Star sort Trek. of top hat ish element on uh-huh. Star Trek Operation Enterprise, yeah. which is their mech. The non inverting launch Immelman coaster. Ish. Yeah. Somewhere between a top hat and an Immelman is the first major full circuit element on Star Trek Operation Enterprise. Now, when you take a hard left, you have a beautiful entrance that says Area 51 in those classic Hollywood letters. Uh, like Hollywood letters. What, what would you call that kind of art style? You know, like the letters? They're so typical. Like Hollywood Studios uses them. Everyone uses them. Uh, yeah. I, well, I don't even I know what the font like is called. It's like typical studio it's a kind Hollywood of font. font. It's like, yeah, they're, they're kind of like fat little art deco letters. 
Exactly. Um, you know what we're, you know what we mean. Yeah. Well, yeah. Go to the website, the coast <laughs> slash Hollywood in Germany. Yeah. And you'll find it there. <laughs> anyway, um, that is the entrance to area 51, which is one of their major dark rides. So this dark ride used to be the Bermuda triangle alien encounter, which you may be familiar with the, the volcanoes in which the flume spits out a volcano. Um, that it was built in two locations. There was one that was built at SeaWorld in Australia that died years ago, and then movie park, um, you know, Warner Brothers Movie World had yeah, theirs. Built and a clone it was of it. Quite spectacular, and they've had theirs ever since. In 2019, they relaunched the ride um, where they rethemed it, and they turned the volcanoes into typical Nevada mountains. Uh, we guess now seen to Area 51. Yeah, it, you know, if you're, like Force Base. if you're out there in Australia and you rode. The original at SeaWorld, or you were a Aren't fan of that. Aren't they both the same age? Hmm? Aren't they both the same age? The, the flume rides? Yeah, no, yeah. Just, I think they're I both. I think so. Well, no, I think, no. SeaWorld's opened first, and it was, cl- I believe it was cloned for the Germany park after the fact. But I digress. Uh, you can go to Movie Park Germany and ride that classic SeaWorld signature ride um, in a beautifully updated um New sequencing with with lots of it's it's just a great. It, I was already a fan of this ride because it was it's quite potent. It's 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 surprising. It's full of surprises. It's impressive, and now it's quite polished and has a more uh, succinct storyline. So this is a water based dark ride. Um, that They're Pirates of the Caribbean uses lift aliens. hills and drops <laughs> to connect you with the indoor show building and then the outdoor station. So you would kind of. You know, leaves the station, make an S turn towards the first volcano. Well, now I guess mountain. They're not, yeah, there. And uh, you would enter the mountain and uh, via lift hill, and then there will be a significant drop, like quite a long drop, into a incredibly wet splash that is encased in like it's a sort super of cave. wet. <laughs> like it's so wet because all the water bounces off of the sides of the of the cave. And then you're pretty much, um, by the time you have that run out of the drop, you're pretty much at the very back of the show bowling, and then you kind of make your way all the way forward. Via a variety of alien, UFO, U.S. Air Force scenes, including the infamous backwards section, and then you navigate the lift hill to leave the show building, exit on top, and then take the shoot down the mountain back outside to where the uh, the loading platform is. Uh, quite an ingenious ride. Um, long, we really enjoy it. Animatronics are in great shape. Overall, this is a really fun, enjoyable dark ride. We rode a couple times this trip. Nicely manicured since the update. Um, good stuff. I like it. It's kind of like Pirates. Imagine having some restraints on it, though, because the drops are a little more intense than on the Pirates mm-hmm. uh, rides. But, um, yeah, it's like Alien Pirates. It's slightly it's lower definitely, budget. I, I, I really feel like it takes you to another place. I love the positioning of the drops on it, serving as major points of transitioning in and out of the... Uh, not, just, yeah, yeah. Not, not just in and out of the show building, but in and out of... The, the storytelling components. Like, they just do a really good job. It really feels well, like... Well, of course, because like, you really go deep into um, the mountain via the drop, and you're really kind of really deep in it. That's when you explore all of, like, you know, the secret... No, it's, in fact, right, it's even technically called Air 51 Top Secret. Top Secret. Because, you yeah, know, you, you then discover all the secrets time. of um, Area 51. But, uh, yeah, great you. dark ride. Really enjoy it. Definitely one of those things you can't miss. Now, if you are going to ride that, I would say ride a little bit later in the day because it's right at the entrance, so yeah. it kind of gets bum rushed. The Sparks layout is not necessarily the most intuitive. Um, definitely was inspired by Australia's um, Gold Coast Warner Brothers similar park layout. Um, but let's head over to the next water dark ride kind of attraction, uh, yes. which is Excalibur: The Seekers of the Dark Forest. This rapids ride it used to be a family's episode favorite. This was the never-ending story rapids ride. That was filled with animatronics, dark ride scenes, tunnels. Just one of the coolest rapid rides around. I mean, rapid rides are often naturalistically approached. Um, they're not quite as themed usually. Even the Disney ones are very naturalistic. There really isn't a whole lot going on that isn't just like rock work, waterfalls, and, and you know, vegetation. Um, and then there's this rapid ride. Um, after since they lost the Warner Bros. licensing, it was turned to Mystic River for a little while, um, which Alex has written Mystic River too. Um, yeah, I enjoyed it. And then it's been now turned... Sorry, Mystery River. Not Mystery River. Yeah. Mystery River. And now it's been turned into Excalibur, Secrets of the Dark Forest, which is themed to the uh, Knights of the Round Table and the famous sword Excalibur. So pretty much what we're doing is we're leaving 
Merlin's Grotto, and we're going on this quest to find the sword. Um, starts off in an indoor section, which includes the lift hill where Merlin appears in these different, like, kind of, like, glass balls. It's honestly such an impressive ride. Like, let's get then, it on Google Earth. Like, look at this yeah, thing. Yeah, half of it's indoor. Like, you just don't see a rapids ride executed like this every day, where the dark ride sequences and the daytime sequences are of, like, each equal significance and substance. Um, even some of the greatest rapids rides out there either have like have little to no uh story sequencing and scenes and stuff and this ride is all about storytelling and it does a great job i think considering the challenges that come with doing a round rapids ride and you getting get feet yeah, in all directions see, yeah, yeah and making it uh, like making it all make sense and making it all visible for every rider it's hard. It's a challenge, and I think they do a really good job. For sure, because once you exit the lift, though, there's a couple of scenes that are still inside, like some crystal grotto thingy, and then you make your way outside. You kind of go through a bunch of different scenes, including um, a scene with um, knights killed by swords hanging from the walls of the castle, and then there's a scene with a uh, some sort of water monster that spits water at you, and some sort of snake serpent thingy. And then eventually you make your way back inside. The inside section is quite long. Um, it's also really predictable. You can easily get wet. Um, and then the grand finale is seeing the sword on some rock work with like thunder and lightning. And, uh, it's quite spectacular because that's a, a giant dome in which the finale takes place. Um, it's actually one of the larger structures of the ride itself. And then you kind of continue through the rock work back to, um, back to the grotto in which you'll disembark, uh, which is a giant circular station. But overall, good stuff. There are definitely some remnants. From Never Ending Story, um, some of the some of the details on the walls and like the, the theming, but it really helps. It creates kind of like this, this mystical sort of uh, ride experience. I'm a big fan of the ride. Absolutely, definitely. I think it's one of the top five uh, rides here, and it's it's you know it's just different. Like you ride rapids rides all the time, and and you you'll even run into a rapids ride or two with some great scenes and storytelling. But this just feels like. It was approached so differently. It feels like we're building a dark ride that has an outdoor portion, but it's a rapids ride. It's funny. It used to be even more indoor because now the f- final turn where all the nights are before you go back inside, they used to all, all be inside as well. So the ride actually used to be majorly inside a uh, rapids ride, which I think is just so unique. I don't think I've ridden another rapids ride in the world where there's so much indoor. Oh, yes. I see exactly what you're space. talking about. That that last U-turn before you Yeah, the giant building. turn that used to be a building, too. You can so see now it's exactly just walls without where the building was. had been. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting um, so ride. That used, so that, that all used to be building, too. Mm-hmm. Kind of crazy. Every ride here has such rich history. For a park that's not that old, I mean, I guess the park is old. The park has been many different parks, parks before. Yeah. God, it's been a lot. Of it's it's like it's it's on like its fifth unique identity, and everything that was built in the Warner Brothers movie world era, you know, you know it's still open. Just has like such an amazing history because it all everything is kind of on like its second or third iteration at this point, and um, the major dark water ride attractions are, I think, two of the best examples of that. It's funny because you used to have three. Um, because what is now the uh, building for the movie park studio, Studio Tour Coaster, that was actually a, well, it, it started off the Looney Tunes, Tunes right, with a, with a giant bridge lift hill that would actually turn to drop, strangely, like, how do you, like, it's kind of like, like a, a seesaw. seesaw. Like the, like the bottom, coaster. the bottom of the drop, the bottom of the lift hill would then suddenly become the top of the drop. Yeah. So you would kind of go on a little bit of a lift, up, yeah. and then it would kick all the way up, and then you would go down that slope into the into the spiral drop. <laughs> Quite spectacular and wild. Then it was Ice Age, still had the same effects, and then eventually they um, they, they closed that to build a new themed roller coaster. We'll get to that in a little bit. Um, next up, we have. Um, let's you see. You want to talk about. We'll talk more about Nickelodeon later, I guess. Uh, we can talk about Nickelodeon right now. So, you want to talk about it now? Okay. Yeah, let's talk about it now. So, um, the park within the park. Nickelodeon. So long story short, ever since Move Park Studios was built, um, both Excalibur and Move Park Studios are they are right next to each other. They're mm-hmm. in the back of Nickland. So in order to get they have to go through Nickland. They are now themed to it's the, the studio back lot. The studio back lot. Um, so they both on their show buildings have giant you know, Studio B and Studio C. Um, murals, billboards, murals, yeah. which is really clever because there's a lot of 
never ending rapids, <laughs> um, you know, Excalibur that's show building. So they cleverly hide it by making it all seem like they are sound stages. Yeah. Which is really clever. I actually really like the integration of making that two, like, you know, super action-themed attractions, kind of their own little area in the back of the park. Mm-hmm. And then right in front of that, you've got Nick Land. So Nick Land is home to 14 rides, including three roller coasters. We have a Meg Wild Mouse, which opened as Tom and Jerry Mouse in the House, my first ever experience on that thing. Your dad still calls my Wild dad Mouse still Coasters Tom the, and Jerry. The Tom and Jerry Coasters, Coaster. all of them. <laughs> um, and then it became Mad Manor, which just seemed to like some mad chase through a house. Mad Manor? Mad Manor. That was the uh, Star Park's iteration of that coaster. Wait, I need for to look for two up years. pictures of this. I don't it even had, remember that. It had maroon that. supports, and it had yellow track, and it was seen to a dragon living in a big castle, or manor, I guess, Mad Manor. Um, and then you that had... That sounds so cute. And then you had Spongebob, uh, Squidward, yeah, Ghost Chasers. Chasers. Particular. Oh, it, it was cute. Wow, it's Matt to the was uh, cute. Flying Dutchman from Spongebob. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Matt Banner honestly didn't look wow, that good. Wow, it actually looked good. really good. So yeah, it was going to seem to like a big manner. Anyway, um, and then you have the Beck Yardigans Mission to Mars roller coaster, which used to be the that was Coyote the and Roadrunner. Wiley Coyote, Roadrunner, Chase. Yes, it was the Coyote and Rad Runner, the Octoban, I think it was. Yeah. Um, that was actually one of the coolest kitty cars ever built. It had crazy the rock work. was really uh, It was honestly kind of like Big Thunder Mountain vibes. Um, <laughs> and it was really, really impressive. There were tunnels, and it made this relatively small Vacoma layout. It's like this crazy cool coaster. Um, then it was turned into some poodle and other dog <laughs> crazy rocket coaster um, using the same rock work. And then the rock was, was removed, and they built uh, Mission of, Mission to Mars. It seems a shame they did, had to lose the rock work. I know. I thought it was cool. And there must have been structurally wrong with it. It's I don't possible think it would have otherwise it rotted lost out or it. something. Yeah. You just never know with stuff like that. And then they also have um, Jimmy Neutron Atomic Fly, which is a Pacoma suspended family coaster. That's a solid ride. Really solid ride. That's I mean, just this ride. Nickland has really solid attractions. Because for family attractions, having Ghost Chasers, a, a decent sized kitty coaster. And having um, Atomic Flyer. I mean, these are three major... And then uh, the family other like, major, major ride in that area, for me, I think, is, is the Door of the Explorer log flume. Yeah, and it's a quite a long it's log a flume. It's a full-size log rides. flume yeah. with terraforming, rock work. I think that's the reason that they got rid of Ice Age eventually, because now just, because that park at one point had four e-ticket water rides. Mm-hmm. I mean, what do you mean four e-ticket water rides in Germany? I mean, yeah. that's, a, that's almost like too much. four major... Water rides, which well, you is got wet. Yeah. yeah, like wet rides, especially Dora. And Dora's the worst. Mm-hmm. I've ridden it exactly one time. It was my first visit in 2013, and we got decimated. The first drop is in just a goes tunnel, right into this little pipe shaped tunnel, and just totally fucks you up. Like first round, no. <laughs> like just like that. There's a TikTok that by the time you listen to this may already be on our TikTok channel. Check it out. It's in our drafts right um, now. You will literally see a little boat come in, and then the people come out it's just so like it's a small little drop, but people come out literally like they have just been through a hurricane. It's hilarious, like, actually. It's so wild. Awesome. It's a that's a great opportunity for people watching because you watch the boats go down. This tiny little drop into the tube, and you just hear the squeals of people yeah, we call getting it the, soaked. We call it, like, it the Tunnel of Doom. The Tunnel of Doom. The Tunnel of Doom. And then they come out the on water. the other side, like, completely bewildered and defeated and soaking wet. And they're like, we just oh, started the ride. This is the little drop. I got it. This. <laughs> it's great. It's- uh, and then they also have um, Spongebob Splash Bash, which is a splash battle. Um, they have a last, uh, you know, Avatar Last Airbender flying yeah, guess, carousel yeah. thingy. Mm-hmm. They've got um, Splatosphere, which is one of the it's most kind of popular the rides. Piece. It's their it's, uh, kind chance of, aviator. Yeah, with, with a tall one. Yeah. I don't know if they're all that tall, but it just feels tall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's that's the same height as like we were the one at Dollywood, right? Um, I, I can't recall. <laughs> it goes no, we didn't. I saw the rides aren't no, exactly that. I wrote, I wrote Spl- Splatosphere though, but I've never in that. Um, then they have a new little area of. What is that what was called? Patrol. Paw Patrol. Little Paw Patrol subsection. It's like the kitty area within the kitty area. And then they've Super got a uh, barnyard, bumper cars. They have they fairy have fairy parents, parents, teacups, teacups, teacups type things. They, they have Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle, like, driving school kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, it, th- this is, like, a legit really, There's really neat land. There's a lot to see and do in and this area. And I think area. that movie park... It really does get its title because they have so many IPs now there. Mm-hmm. It's honestly kind of neat how many IPs are in that park. There's now. even a dance party. There's that even happens. a dance party. <laughs> it's also we also have a 
That TikTok should be live by the time. Yeah, this that is one live. we can't hold. Up. Then we can't hold that one in any longer. We're, <laughs> that one's going live tomorrow. Also, yeah. So long story short, go to our TikTok, give us a follow, give all of our videos a little view, uh, help us out. I think you're gonna enjoy that. But yeah, anyway, let's leave Nick Lamb oh behind. We're gonna cross the other side of the park, and we're gonna head towards Van Helsing's factory. Van Helsing's factory and time traveler. Okay, so Van Helsing's factory is super. Is that that's a really special ride? Van Helsing's factory really is a special ride. It is one of my favorite indoor coasters in the world. Mm-hmm. Not to be dramatic, and it's, one of, it's like easily the best Gershwin. So it used to be a Gremlins Dark Ride in this building, where you would start in a bunch of little kinos of like little movie theaters. Yeah, and then you would watch this little movie, and the Gremlins came through the screen and like. <laughs> Through all the cabinets, and they were like Greek half. Very, very. And then on the other side, you would leave out of an emergency exit, which led into the dark ride um, boarding stations. You would then board the dark ride vehicles, and you would go through the Gremlins dark ride, where they were wreak havoc on this film reel storage, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, because it was in the movie theater. And then you would eventually exit. We, as a kid, it kind of freaked me out a little bit, that ride. But um, it was it was a neat dark ride. If you ever get a chance to do YouTube it, YouTube it. They took away that after they lost the rights to it, the ride as uh, Star Parks took over. And they eventually, in 2011, relaunched that building with a Gerslauer bobsled coaster. Now, I'm going to tell you, this is one of the wildest bobsled coasters ever created. We're, like, under underselling this it. This is, like, the winner. This is the wildest. This is the winner. So, you first go through Van Helsing's... Um, workshop, workshop with the it's, cars. You know, he's playing to you that like all Jerry's being like mad attacked by all these vampires right now, and it's not safe to go out. But if you must go out, use one of his yeah. vehicles. So then he goes to the station. And if he goes to the station, there's like a bunch of limbs I love it. hanging from the <laughs> ceiling, and it's like this it's some horror night shit. Yeah, they definitely great. took the horror approach for this thing. Um, and then you join the, then you board the little vampire hunting vehicle. There's so there's a smart little dark ride. Section. I love it because he's like, I, I love this whole like absolutely under no circumstances should you go outside. But if you go outside, you can take my armored car. It's waiting for you out front. And it's, the engine is running. And then the machine, the machine gun goes off. Yeah, it's so funny. Thank like you. So funny. And then you board, and um, the ride isn't very long. Must preface. But it is really well themed because it's pretty much like a giant dark ride that is also a coaster, which is just a, a really Really move, move park thing to do. Move they they were really build dark rides and coasters. Mastered the art of dark ride coasters. Or, really, they've mastered the art of dark ride hybrid rides because they don't have a traditional dark ride anymore. They have, yeah. But they have two roller coasters and two water rides that are dark rides first and foremost. Where like every little thing you do is themed. There's a scene. There's action. But you are mo- moving like it's not water just pre shows or... and post shows like. The entire ride is a dark ride. It just uses a medium that is not a traditional dark ride. Exactly. So, Fun Housing Factory, you have to lift. Uh, there's a vampire attacking you. Um, and then you dive down through the factory. You're still in the factory at this point. Um, by the furnace. And then you spit out of the building into the dark, into the black forest. <laughs> which you... The rib cracking sequence. Well, not yet. You oh, we haven't of, gotten No, okay, we're, we're, we're now in the forest set. with like the thunder and the lights. And oh, yes, kind of yeah. Swirling that's, right around. Before, that's before the rib Then cracking. we enter another... Typical German warehouse, old factory abandoned situation, which is quite common in Germany. Yeah. Uh, from industrial age leftovers. And this is where, like, the wildest effing part of any <laughs> indoor coaster ever occurs. It does the wild mouse thing with, with the, drops the curves, curves, and curves and stuff, but you've, it, 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 you can't help but feel like there should have been a trim break or something somewhere. I'm allowed to explain right it. Before. Imagine you are entering the hairpin trim with the most speed imaginable. You enter this hairpin turn, and you're like, shit. And then there's a little drop, and there's another one. Faster. And they're not just, like, like not, three. They're not just 180 returns. They're, like, 270, because they're like, they kind of fold in on themselves. Yeah, they're, like, light bulb-shaped little turns, three in succession. And by the time you get out of there, you slam into and some breaks in your mid It's hard to believe. You're it's like, crazy. oh, my God. Like, I cannot believe you go through that at full speed. It's shrieking like, and screaming the, like for the, me. The side friction wheels on those vehicles bear the brunt of that. Like, it's hard for me to believe that it... It's funny because you can just hear it in school just thinking about yeah, it right now. Like like, the, the wheel assemblies act, literally scream oh their way God, through. Oh my God, it's so good. And like, it was that good when it opened. I remember the first time I wrote that, when I, right after it opened 2011, I went with Tantisha. Yeah. And um, oh my God, we were like, what Did the you think hell? that they we were, were going to change it? Screaming. I just didn't expect it to last. I was, exactly. It's like, and it's you still think, there. like, this is not a sustainable uh, feature. Like, when I wrote it in 2013, I was like, I cannot believe that ride does that. Like, I cannot believe that they didn't 
begrudgingly yeah, install again in 2018, a still so again great. this year still this this ride amazing. delivers every single time, time every time we because go. then you leave those hairpin turns and you're in a scrapyard which he does mention to appreciate or like in the queue like hey um, if you're going out I need some shit from the scrapyard to yeah. fix this car because yeah. like, he's fixing a car actively while you're mm-hmm. in this workshop uh, you know get the stuff for me so you go to the to the scrapyard, and there's actually an animatronic left uh, from Gremlins that is that is controlling the little the little scoop thingy. What is <laughs> the thing called? Like the little, um, it's like a little machine thing that you can grab up sh- shit with. And I think, I don't yeah, know what to call it. it's some yeah construction vehicle. some construction like, vehicle. Like a, I think they just call it a scoop or something. Yeah, and then you go up the next lift hill, which else is it a launch? The it's lift kind of a hill launch. is a tire driven lift hill, and like but the like first halfway up, you start speeding up really start, fast, and you it really takes off at the top. You get airtime over the top. Yeah, true. And you get no, airtime over the top. That makes it a launch. For all intents and purposes, it is a launch. It's a launch. But on that lift, though, you're kind of going between all these scrap cars. I want to point out that all of these effects are practical effects. There's, like, virtually no screens or anything on this ride. There's one scene, like, you're going up the first lift hill, where they have four TVs positioned to make it look like the vampire is coming at you through a window. Yeah. Which I love. Um, other than that, it's, like, all practical effects. So you're going up the second lift hill in the scrapyard... And it's like physical piles of scrap. Yeah, of vehicles, like a vehicle. You know, like smash vehicles together, and then out of those vehicles come two animatronic werewolves of some sort that like attack your vehicle, and then you launch away from them. Mm-hmm. You have a drop into an upward helix, into another pretty sharp turn, to mm-hmm. another drop, and then you have a little S bunny hill that goes through. Normally, when it's working properly, because it wasn't working properly in our trip. Um, a fox screen at which there's another vampire oh, yes. that flies right at you and yeah. then you go through them and you kill him yeah. so when you get into the break run and then you're, he's, he's like speared to the top of the building and he's dead he bleeding. is speared into the top of the into to the wall it's and then so Van Helsing comes out on the side and he's, he's like, like wow like, not bad yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then you disembark and then you leave down the hallway and then popping out of the ceiling comes another vampire yeah, and vampire and shit and out, of you. out of the ceiling I like shit my pants. Oh my god! The first in, in 2013, when I was so not ready. I was ready shrieking. It was so wild for that level of commitment. But then, I that was like the signature ride when I went and like riding that. I'm like, oh, this park's going places. Like this. That is, was really the like, jump started their fascination with like, doing that. This park that. has a bright future. <laughs> and they're pulling shit like this. Yeah, there's there's very clear timelines. There is the Wonder Brothers timeline. Then there is the Nickland timeline. Well, there's the short two year Star, Star park, park timeline, which segment. I like to forget existed. Then there's the Nickland timeline, which Move Park kind of got its own identity. Finally, it wasn't yeah. just like the Wonder Brothers park that under the licensing. It was really a sad time. And then there is the Fun Helsing time when they really just took on a, they they took on their own. Projects they they bought an individual franchise and they ran with it. Original concept, original ideas, original storyline, and um, and that's the era they were still in. Like all these attractions that they've revamped and they built and they've done um, all kind of yeah. That ended thing. up being a trend. It wasn't a fluke or an exception. That became there, what they did with there. Van Helsing is what they've been doing the last ten years, and now the whole park is approaching that same level of quality that Van Helsing first brought to the table with, like, reimagining and repurposing infrastructure. I mean, it was a tall order flipping this park over from the Warner Brothers days, and they've really, like, they've really come a long way in the 10 years between Van Helsing and Studio Tour, for example, inside of that 10-year... They've done some impressive things, thing. because they've also done... And we'll probably talk about Star Trek in a minute. They've done Star Trek Operation Enterprise. Mm-hmm. They've done um, obviously the water ride retheme. The two water ride rethemes. They have done. Um, they've touched up the Wild West area a little yeah, bit. Wild West. Area. Um, they right before Van Helsing did, of course, Santa Monica Pier. That was yeah. Nick Land and um, Nick Van Helsing. And sorry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah. Okay. Let's continue with right in front of. Um, Fun Housing Factory is actually another major, major ride that is a big simulator ride. It is Time Riders. So when did this reopen as Time Riders? Was that I during believe, Star Parks? I believe it was Star Parks. Because Time Riders... Okay, guys. Like This was my first time riding Time Riders. I had never dedicated time to it on previous visits. And this was mind-blowing. It's actually know, quite good. This is a huge, huge attraction. It so was like, this is actually one of the big e-tickets. So we had the e-tickets of opening day... Were Gremlins. Never Ending Story, Gremlins, 
Looney Tunes Dark Ride. Um, Bermuda Triangle. Bermuda Triangle. And this Batman-themed simulator ride. So, the Batman-themed simulator ride... And would, weapon. <laughs> so, it was in a shoot in New York, and you would enter... Um, the Batcave. The, well, the manor first. Yeah, oh yeah. Um, and then... And then Alfred would, you would like, be show you to the Batcave. In his library, and then you would go into the Batcave. Um, in the Batcave, everyone would sit down, and there would be this whole Bat, Batman show. And then you would be split up... Into eight simulators. You know, they had, they built eight simulators for this thing. Like this is Star Tours. These capacity. vehicles are smaller than Star Tours, but there's more. But of there's them. so many, and there's eight of them. So this this ride literally has more capacity than like Star Tours in Anaheim with their four simulators. Because when they built this, they really expected Warner Bros. Movie World to be like the next Disneyland of Europe. Mm-hmm. We all know how Universal and Warner Bros. and all those other parties. I mean, including Disney, all struggled. And the only one that actually stuck through is Disney. Anywho. So now you go into this library. There's a little bit of talking about this time machine they've created to jump in between different points in time. Um, the and set then, design for all of this is amazing. It really like, it's is. just like two giant two story sets, like big eye. Yeah, it is a like field of, experience, field of vision, feeling Hollywood level set design. And then you board what well, used to be the Batcave, which is now just a giant cave with a time machine in it. And there's these little tubes going to every single row with lights move through the tubes. And you sit there and the time machine's kind of acting up and starting up. And everyone has to get to their time rover thingy, which is a simulator. So then you leave that building and then you all head towards your individual simulators. And which hold, I think, like 12 people-ish? Oh, more than that. Because they, they hold like 20 people. Was it twenty people? I remember if I remember correctly, I, I think mean, it right. was like four rows of five. And the front row five three rows of or four something. was like Yeah, it was like it was definitely more than a dozen. And I was afraid that I had remembered it differently. It was gonna be kind of not as great of an attraction. But honestly it was really fun. Like yeah. it was pretty decent quality. It's very intense. It is incredibly intense. It is the really intense. That, the vehicles are very squirrely. Um but they're they're smooth. It's just they used to have a lot of the rates of motion is quite impressive. Um, so you jump through all those different time events, you go in the water, you know, the usual simulator stuff, and then you leave from the back of the building, where you exit the show building, and you walk all the way around back to NYC Transformer, which used to be the Riddler. Yeah. Um, Just their very the, the, the Riddler uh, top spin. terrifying looking house top spin. So that was kind of like the Batman corner, because you would exit at a Transformer of the city, which was also, uh, you know, a flat ride. Um... Really held up well, but the infrastructure is massive. You look at it from a map; it's such a giant operation. Because where you enter and where you exit are not even near each other. Yeah. You know, like you have to kind of walk all the way around yeah. to get back. Um, great ride. Really, really enjoyed it. Something that I hadn't ridden since 2011, so I was really glad it still held up for sure. Um, I guess okay. So from here, should we head to the Wild West? Yeah, we can go to the Wild West. Um, we rode High Fall, which is their Intamin that gyro is, drop. Yeah, their Intamin floorless gyro drop. You know, fans of um, Acrophobia at Six Flags Over Georgia will know this ride concept well. Um, and it, it's one of their more notable attractions. Some people we know it's their favorite attraction there. Um, for us, like I love the ride and I love the presence of it and how like the queue is a bank and, and the like, queue is quite impressive. It's a really it's nice really setup nice. around like, the ride. Like the outdoor queue is on this veranda, like on the mm-hmm. um, on the porch, and then you go yeah. inside the bank and there's all these bank tellers and, um, and it's, like, it's a cool queue. Germans love their drop towers. I feel like every major park in Germany has a high profile drop ride attraction that like they sell merchandise for and like has its own culture surrounding it. So this is no exception. Um, the only complaint we have is just that the te- the seats are supposed to tilt forward. Yeah, they haven't tilted our last two visits on them. Which not only does that provide a cool effect, but it also really helps with like the comfort level when you land, when you hit the brakes. Because Without it, you're just all of that brake power goes right on like your pubic bone, like yeah, right on your crotch. Yeah, because you really are standing up on like a kind of, uh, standing like a up isn't like in a station. Yeah. And when you take off, you're just hanging on a yeah on like a bicycle seat. So you're highly uncomfortable. Um, it hurts honestly. Yeah. So uh, not as good as I remember, but um, still a really neat ride. The and public acro- eats it. Up. Acrophobia has had its seat molds replaced. You know, not long after it opened, so it kind of like cradle your butt more. And that one, like, it still tilts forward, and so when you land, a lot of your the weight goes on, like, the shoulder restraint, and, like, 
it's it's distributed the weight of uh, the positive g-forces are more evenly distributed throughout your body whereas on high fall it literally just goes right on your crotch like <laughs> we call it the crotch crush yeah it hurts. <laughs> um, speaking of things that hurt in the crotches um next up is the infamous bandit now i like bandit i still like bandit but i'm not happy with Bandit. I'm mad <laughs> at Bandit. <because> so, <laughs> let's start real quick with the Wild Bandit opens. So Bandit opens as the Wild Wild West Coaster, which is themed to that movie with... Um, was Will Smith? Will Smith. Yeah. And it opened with... It was built by Roller Coaster Corporation of America mm-hmm. and Cyclone layout, and it opened with these Intamin two bench vehicles that were kind of themed to, like, you know, some Wild West car, whatever. Right. Um, shortly after, they were replaced with premier trains that hold the three rows of six people per car, five cars long. Very, very long trains for a coaster that has some quite tight turns. Stylish, incredibly stylish coaster. Um, when I was a kid, it was the big American roller coaster. That was probably my favorite coaster at the park. It was, yeah. you know, kind of my, my speed when I was a kid. Um, in Europe, wooden coasters especially are then, it was rare. associated with America. Uh, when Wild Wild West opened, it was the first wooden coaster in Germany. Um, it is the oldest wooden coaster in Germany. So it was a big thing when they opened it. And it's still really, really popular with the audience. Ride is themed to uh, a bank heist. So you enter this little Wild West town. And then you go inside... Um, some wild western overflow queue and then you <laughs> actually enter the bank vault and uh, there's all these wanted posters there's some, some sort of sheriff office I think you're going through and then you enter the actual bank vaults after which you go upstairs and there's more bank vaults and that's where you board the actual bandit coaster I mean it's a, a super stylish coaster it's, like it does that western thing very well it's got a great presence it really does it's cool um, it doesn't run super smooth anymore, but it ran really smooth 2018. Yeah, we, we had some bit. good rides on it. It's just not this time. We rode in the very front, and it just didn't seem like it was it kind of just takes agreeing beating. with. Uh, <laughs> it didn't seem to agree with itself very well, sadly. Um, but it, the ride still has great potential, and I'll, like we'll, I'll, I'll always ride it every time we go just to see how it's holding up. You know, if not for enjoyment, for curiosity, um, and I just think it's a, it's a, it's kind of a classic. I don't know. There's rumors that it'll get RMC. That's something that everyone likes to talk about these uh, days. But the park has pretty much already shut that but down. The park, because yeah. it's one of their family coasters. Um, it's kind of like the biggest of the family coasters they've gotten. And everyone, I mean, it's a really, really popular coaster. Yeah. Still. In 2018, that was the thing that had the longest line by the far. ride. Yeah, like, the ride is simply too popular. And other and, and frankly successful for movie park to feel like that's a, a priority for them. Like there's always going to be things that I think movie park will be more interested in doing than doing that. Than doing I, I would RC. love a GCI so, makeover of it, kind of a, a, a Ghost Rider at yeah. Bay Farm. Complete yeah, complete retrack. And I, then I think it's just the f- flyers. The ride being a wooden coaster, like a true authentic wooden coaster, is too significant to its identity and to its culture totally for them to sacrifice that so for those of you wondering i think you're it's a safe bet that when you make your movie park germany dream vacation come true bandit will probably still be intact <laughs> it'll still be bandit uh, it'll still be bandit it will not be iron bandit or anything crazy like now, that the biggest surprise in the wild west area the, the most pleasant yeah. surprise yeah is um, MP Express. So MP Express got repainted for the future Looky Look relaunch of the ride. And Looky Look is a is what, what is Looky Look? It's a again? Belgian Western um, comic, which has Looky Look the pilot, the Lucky Luke, what we call Looky Luke. I was gonna say it's Lucky Luke. Lucky Luke, yeah. if you pronounce it all correctly, but you know Dutch Belgian people, Looky Luke is kind of how we say it. Uh, anyway, he is a. Cowboy, and then the town is being terrorized with the four brothers, Daltons, which keep getting caught and keep get you know by the sheriff and they keep escaping. It's a and, very um, if you like, it's a very like Dudley Do Right kind of vibe to it. This oh, is totally! Extremely um, like Toon Lagoon kind of territory. Yeah, and the uh, the Dalton brothers, the four of them, they all wear their prison striped pajamas, which are black yellow and, and yellow. black. Yeah. Which is what the train is themed to. So now the train, the theme of the coaster, supposedly when it finishes its makeover, is a runaway train with them on board and you're on the runaway train as well. 
So the tracks of the coaster are silver gray, and the supports are three different shades of brown, kind of. It's a so very it's kind of like ride. scattered throughout the when layout. When we did the Crystal Crown Awards for best paint scheme, we had to give it to this ride because it's so it looks so the complexity good. of the paint job. It, like they just really went above and beyond, and it totally fits with the Western theme because typical Warner Brothers they built this whole Western area and they said, ah, let's build an SLC, and mm-hmm. they slapped the SLC theme to the Eraser movie. Right next to the Wild West. <laughs> a movie area. that people probably don't remember unless they're like big Arnold Schwarzenegger fans. Like, oh, fans. the Eraser. But, but the Eraser yeah, is like that, literally like hugging movie. Bandit. Like, it made no sense. It yeah. was ugly. And it took him all the way up to now to kind of make it all work together. But MB Express, as it's still named right now, um, looks really good. It looks like a complete Western themed SLC, which honestly, it's such a vibe. Like, and the picture we took like, is awesome. It's a super enjoyable ride, too. It really, oh my god, I mean, we like SLCs, SLCs, and you can judge us for that. I don't care. But this is, um, I, I will say, this was a particularly good one. Yeah, yeah. It was a particularly likable one. Alex wore earrings, sunglasses, nothing happened. Oh, yeah. Earrings <laughs> you know, earring was fine. It was just yeah, the usual I, for an SLC. Usually, so. sunglasses for me, or my glasses on SLCs don't always do as well. They seem to really be threatened by the shape and size of the shoulder harnesses and kind of getting shuffled around a bit. But, yeah, this one was quite smooth, so we really enjoyed our ride on it. Now, if we're going to make our way back towards the Federation Plaza area, which used to be um, where the Hollywood Film Museum was, they actually Mm. had a bunch of props there, Um, that's now where we can find Star Trek Operation Enterprise. Mm -hmm. But before we get there, we have to pass through Santa Monica Pier, which is home to a wave swinger, a Ferris wheel, a giant disco coaster. Mm-hmm. So if you call that, that's a credit. There's even more coasters there. They're building a new. They have one of those area. jet. They have one of those jet ski water rides for like on the water. Yeah, and the very do, like Legoland ish. Yep, and then they do direction. shows on the water. That's used to where Cop Car Chase was. So okay, check out the really Cop Car Chase area. episode. <sighs> this is so. We love movie. Yeah, you guys, we're such simps for movie park Germany that like our coasters A through Z. Minisodes, we did two movie park coasters, Cop Car Chase and Star Trek, Star Trek Operation, Operation yeah. Enterprise. So, um, so yeah, you pass through the, the Santa Monica. I think the Santa Monica Pier was a fun choice. It's clever. It's they really, They really had to do as much Hollywood things as they could just to kind of make the park, movie park kind of work. And as, it works well as, as a concept. It's very meta because I love that it's a theme park area themed to a real amusement park. Yeah, despite obviously the ride not being often, the same. I mean, but... Santa Monica Pier is often called, like, the most famous amusement park because it is used so, so, so much as backdrop um, and film on location for various commercials, movies, TV shows. Like, it's it's quite recognizable. And I'm actually kind of surprised that no one else has done this. Like, no other park out there. For all the parks out there themed to filmmaking, California, movie making, American Southwest, this is the only one that has a Santa Monica Pier themed area. And I think it's actually quite cute. It's also quite a vibe. Like, it's nice. Um, And it also kind of works with being linked with, like you said, the Wild West area and then the other end now being linked with San Francisco's Federation Plaza. Like, there's just kind of like this whole American West situation going on. There really is a, a, a deep commitment to this park taking place in California. A lot of it, like yeah. a deep, deep commitment. It may not all take place in the same timeline because, like the Wild West area, or Nevada, place, I guess. And I was thinking yeah. about it, it really is a lot, oh, yeah. except area, for NYC area. Transformer, yeah, and well, yeah, Time Riders. New those are New York. Area. So New, New York has Van Helsing and um, Time Riders, Time Riders, and, and, and NYC in. Transformer. Yeah, and the rest is well, Wild the, West, Nevada, yeah. California, California, but like California, yeah, and it's, it's, yeah, and Nickelodeon, which. Takes place. Well, yeah, and of course you got the Hollywood says. Yeah, yeah. it's a lot of California. It's, it's, it, yeah. But it makes sense because it's Hollywood a, theme yeah. park. Yeah, it's a, there's a great unwavering dedication to uh, doubling down on the overall premise of the park, which is Hollywood and Germany. And the great thing is that despite its uh, you know rocky recovery over the years, uh, this park has culture. Like yeah. it is. The patronage of the park has culture. There's people, people wearing love all park. sorts of movie park merch. People wearing Star Trek shirts, Van Helsing shirts, movie park studio this park shirts. Has amazing merch. And we, have, we, have, we have so much movie park merch. We it's have kind of crazy. so much. We could, we could put we, we could put like a whole article together. We could put a three day weekend of, of clothes together. <laughs> That's all movie park Germany. But yeah, let's head over to Federation Plaza. Yes. So we already did a whole episode on Star Trek Operation Enterprise. So we uh, one of the Minnesota's. Yeah. Won't, we won't dive into it too much. For those who aren't really familiar with it, you enter the um, 
Federation of Recruitment Center, mm-hmm. um, and then you get beamed up to the Star Trek. It kind of starts out as like Enterprise. a museum kind of thing, and then you get beamed up into the, the Enterprise bridge. ship. Yeah. Uh, into the bridge, and then um, they're currently not doing the pre-show, but the pre-show was that there's the Borg Cube nearby, which everyone knows the Borg Cube from the Voyager, and I guess Enterprise Series perhaps too, mm-hmm. uh, or the Next Generation, I should say. And then you board your shuttlecraft, which when you board your shuttlecraft, it's actually really neat. So you go to your shuttle launch bay within the ship, and you board your little shuttlecraft, and then your shuttlecraft leaves the station via sliding doors to kind of all separate all events. They are doors at this park. This but park is so many and opening and closing doors. doors. <laughs> and like, yeah, like Area locks. 51 has like six. <laughs> yeah, kind of, I mean, I love that though. Um, and then you end up on a sliding track and you slide over. There's like these alarms going off, like vacuum space is about to open up. There's a little trajectory, like digital map of where the, the shuttle is going to go. is really clever and cute, and I can't believe I never really noticed it until this time. Yeah, so it's kind of proje- like it's calculating the projection yeah. of your shuttlecraft and where you need to go. And so then the doors open, you launch forward halfway up the top hat, you launch backwards up a probably like 150-ish uh, yeah. tall foot spike. With, vertical spike with a 180-degree twist. In the back, it's super, super sick. Like, it's satisfying. such a good element. And then you obviously launch forward again through the launch bay um, up that top hat, mm-hmm. followed by a reverse snake dive. Mm-hmm. Um, it kind of rolls through it kind of slow. got some hang yeah. time in and there. you drop down into a little overbank turn, which into the board drops cube. you into the board cube. And through the board cube, you exit. There's a double down, Followed a really a strong air time hill, hill, and then a, a helix that kind of turns into yeah. a... Zero-G roll. Yep, and then that into the brake right run. into the brakes. Super, super good. Really fun, fun, uh, fantastic ride. For such ride. a small ride, it does a lot. And yeah, it, and it's a perfect loop for the park. It's kind yeah. of the successor... The spiritual cup car chase there. Car. I mean, the entrance is literally right across from where the entrance to cup car chase was. Yeah. It's practically like a few feet away. Yeah, Federation Plaza used to be. It was themed to like some. It TV was, show, um, right? yeah, it was a German TV show. I think it was a, um, God, Marienhof. I yeah, think. that was it. Yeah, that was so, it. Uh, Very good. <laughs> that's it, yeah, that's what it was themed to, and now it's themed to uh, obviously Federation Plaza. So that's really yeah. neat. Um, and I think now it's time to talk about the show yeah. stopper of the park. We're going to talk about Movie Park's newest coaster, which is a family intimate roller coaster. It is the Studio Tour roller coaster. This is their third roller coaster in the park with a launch. It's also (laughs) a complete dark art roller coaster, so I don't even know where exactly to start. So, um, this could start at the beginning. First and foremost, you can go. You, uh, okay. <laughs> we both love this ride we want to talk about. I, love, I was walking up to it. First of all, the premise, the concept of this ride is so amazing. And it is such a, uh, a beautiful, passionate love letter to, like, the studio tram tour at Universal Studios Hollywood. Yes. Often imitated, never replicated. For all of the t- attempts at recreating a functioning film studio so that... a a theme park could could thread a, a fake studio tram tour through it. Um, University of Florida. This, um, all the studios. <laughs> um, all the studios. This park took the concept. They're like, what if we did that? But it's actually it's a roller coaster. Like it's it's so tongue in cheek. Um, they got the aesthetic exactly right. It they totally just gives Hollywood killed vibes. It. And it's so and so. The My first, biggest thing for this ride that I want to say is that it is a love letter. To the history of this park. Of Movie Park Germany. And it is so heartwarming to see how they've embraced their own creativity, their own struggles that they had to overcome after the one. Because let's all, let's all face it. And this is a typical Six Flags Warner Bros. situation yeah. that we have at Six Flags Holland, Six, uh, Six Flags Belgium, yeah, like Six all Flags the parks that they in, decided to like take over. Did all the shit and then left. Put way too much infrastructure in it. Couldn't support it. The local roads couldn't support it. Attendance wasn't what it wanted to be. And they dropped out. And now some... Star Parks is stuck with, like, all this infrastructure, all these super expensive dark rides to maintain. Stuff that, like, you can't as a regional park in Europe necessarily do. But Movie Park, as they are, they've rolled with those punches, mm-hmm. and they've come out much better on the other end. I feel like Studio Tour is, like, their victory lap. It is a, it is a love letter to their own success, and they deserve every bit of it. So what they did is they took all those rides from the past... And present, and they turned all those rides around the park 
into what, what are movies. Yeah. So yeah. everything you do in the park is you experiencing a movie because you're a movie park. Mm. So our favorite one is from Cup Car Chase. Yeah, it's right oh, past my and God. present. So why did you walk in? There's uh, some posters in the walk yeah, reception in the lobby. Room. There's one a of them is one. so the 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 cop car chase one states, and we actually wanted to open an episode with this because we were so nerdy. <laughs> the cop car chase one, among other things, says cars, cars simply, simply cannot fly. fly. Which cop is car chase does not fly. A reference, of course, to the barrel roll sequence on cop car chase, which involved not only the dueling roller coasters performing dueling. Uh, flying acrobatics. Flying acrobatics. But, but also the overhead car that the flies over The animatronic of a, of a full-scale a full scale car prop on fire that would leap over the two tracks right before they popped outside and into their barrel roll secret. So you think, oh, this is a great Easter egg. This is a great reference. It gets even better. Because there is Easter eggs for every single it attraction. Gets even better. Bandit has one. Mm-hmm. There is one for Santa Monica Pier, like Love in Santa Monica. Yes. There is one for the Lost Expedition, which is a simulated ride that they have. It was an open their trip, but it's yeah. themed to dinosaur exploration. It's kind of like Indiana Jones vibes. Mm-hmm. They have one for that. They have them um, for... God, they have it for much everything that's there. They have some actual uh, pictures of movie stars. Yeah. Um, so the next step is a pre-show. Which is kind of like a Jurassic Park kind of character. Yeah, it has a very like Jurassic Park DNA esque uh, character. There's a host. The clapboard, and, is like, what call, right? It's such a yeah, the clap like the clacker like for the for the scenes and stuff. It's just a really. Po- I just I I want to point out how polished, incredibly polished this whole product is. product is. The cues, all of the embellishments, all the Art Deco, it's classic all, Hollywood, and it's all physical. It's not like wallpaper it's not like little flat signs and shit like everything is physically there it feels like you're in a very nice film studio office you go through the pre-show which is great and then you you go through a short sequence of cue where you're in the office behind the scenes and then there's this giant room full of props and just countless easter eggs there's Little miniature models of Van Helsing and uh, Area 51. There's all of these signs and things in the background. Yeah, from the I back mean, of just the, yeah, from the past of the park. I mean, there's old stuff. logos, there's old everything. There's and then, a dress yeah. that one of the Marilyn Monroe walk around characters wears. Um, it's it's just marvelous at every turn. From here, you go up the stairs into the station, which is there's like again, there's some there's some. Famous Hollywood decor on display, um, you know, red carpets, curtains, that whole, the whole bit. Um, and again, just like incredibly polished at every turn. Like they did not cut any corners with this ride. It's they incredible because really went another thing it. I know is all this happens in one giant show building. So there's also a coaster flying overhead and all around you. A coaster flying overhead with like five unique dark ride scenes. So let's talk about the coast itself. So when you take off, you go um, through. You continue through offices on your little studio tour, mm-hmm. um, and then you activate. You need to enter a hot set. So while you go through the little studio areas, there is um, some of the more movie oh, posters. Oh yeah, three of the movie theme. posters are the like the three films that are being filmed while like during your tour. Well, yeah, and then there's a, a couple of other ones that are there as well, like Last Expedition. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, all, those, all those things. And then um, you go through a film reel room where you accidentally yeah. tumble over all the film reel stands that are all falling over. You know, a classic. It's, it's a, a great classic gag. Physical and, like, you hit these little magnetic brakes that make it feel like you're running over something. Exactly. And then you um, there's this fake-out track where you're supposed to be meeting up with the little clapboard character guy, but you're actually accidentally rolling into a hot set, yeah. which is um, themed to, like, something like like twister. Tornado. Yeah, very like Twister, Wizard of Oz. So you're like in this sequence. living room, and then the ceiling blows us yeah, off the screen. Ceiling, the ceiling the blows up. The room blows apart. And you launch and you backwards because of Tornado. And you kind of make your way around the, um, the walls of the show building backwards. And then there's all these like... Little props and stuff from the house. Stuff, like the flying cow. Like, like the flying cow from into the studio. So there's like little housewares and things and a cow and stuff. And they all... 
fly with you like as you go these backwards. Practical, these props that are like floating in midair, and you can't see them until they light, light up. them up with individual stage Spotlights. lights. Yeah. And I'm just, and of course, I'm just writing this, and I'm just so delighted. And then you like crash through a wall, yeah, backwards, you crash backwards into, into a, a prop room, a prop and room. film control room, mm-hmm. um, where there's a really clever turntable. So this is another one of those rooms where like every single prop is actually themed to either yeah. a uh, a maze that they've had. There's Van Helsing props. There is props for all the mazes they've had. Like I said, uh, I can't even recall. There's so many props. There. There's so many freaking props in there. It's pretty and insane. And the the fake out track from the oh film rail track, and then also the turntable connect into the train bay for this ride. So the maintenance barn and stuff is connected at these two points, but it's so seamless. So you wouldn't know when you're yeah, writing it. Yeah. Now, one other one that I remember is um, before it even became Warner Brothers, this was just like a more generic theme park. They had this flat ride, the Tromboat, which is kind of, it's a Schwarzkopf looping starship, uh, which they have one of the high one too. Mm-hmm. And they literally had a prop themed to stuff pre Warner Brothers. Yeah. Like, they literally went so far back in honoring rides yeah. that were there before Warner Brothers even like came into the three or four iterations of the park ago. So awesome. Could. Um, so there's like the control room and um, Steven Thrillberg, Thrill- Steven Thrillberg, which is the main He's director, directing of- all three of these films <laughs> at once simultaneously. Which is why he's in his control center. Yeah. Um, so he is now filming another movie. It's like this action movie, uh, which is You're going called through the streets uh, of way, the way too fast. Too, way too fast. <laughs> <laughs> and it's called and it's way too fast. In, launched the into two. daylight. Yeah. So. Not just Way Too Fast, but it's the sequel to the original Way Too Fast, where it's the number two for Way. So, so you way roll through this, like, New York set, and there's, like, parts going on, there's, there's all like, sorts. a shootout with a cop. It's, like, hilarious. This, this like, 15-second sequence is better than the entire Fast and Furious Supercharged attraction at Universal Studios. That's all physical sets with, like, some screens in the window yeah. frames. And then you roll into the underground, like the metro, yeah. and there is this you underground chase going on. Next to a yellow sports car. Which then launches, which is both an homage to Cup Car Chase... And to whatever new creative movie they're filming. Yeah. And you launch um, outside of the show building into daylight. So yeah. the movie poster at the exit of the ride literally says, like, like we're filming way too fast, launch into daylight. Which literally <laughs> refers to you launching yeah. into daylight. Like, I can't. It's but so then clever. it's also a reference, like, to the little, the cop car chase movie poster in the lobby where it's like cars simply do Can, not fly. Cannot fly. Cannot yeah. fly. And it's like, a reference to this cop car chase themed prop in the new coaster that takes off and then your car is racing you're like your the roller coaster is racing it and then you pop out and you literally fly out area. of the um out of the studio <laughs> into the into the courtyard into the entrance this is where the ride kind of sells itself because it's now you have a sequence. lot of speed and you have i mean it doesn't do a lot, lot in terms of force outside but you um, you are outside. You cross over the entrance to the ride, um, and then you go underneath the classic water tower, mm-hmm. and then back into the giant elephant doors that they call them yeah. of Studio C. Mm-hmm. Why are they called elephant doors? Because back in the day when they were filming live elephant with live animals, they need to be big enough to fit elephants mm-hmm. through. Because classic Hollywood movies include a lot of animals. Mm-hmm. Anyway, and so then you go and back into the show building, and you and you ride. On way above what is actually the queue yeah. and the pre-show, and there's all these suspended scenes. So the first scene is you go and you're flying by the Hollywood Hills. Yeah. There's fireworks and, it's and like, like sparkling. sparkles, and then you take a sharp turn into what is probably the biggest, grandest scene of the ride, which is a giant King Kong-ish yeah. inspired King scene Kong. where he's, he's on the Empire State Building. He's and they have the movie post for the the, movie the King, the, the King, and he hangs off of a giant satellite tower. Yeah, instead of just like not the Empire State Building, oh, but like yeah. the satellite tower that he's hanging. From. I guess. Oh, it's in the poster. Though. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then there's all these searchlights, and you go by in this helix around yeah. him really fast. So it's honestly like a. It's a kind quick, of forceful. It's an incredibly detailed scene for how go quickly through you so go through quick. it. But it's so satisfying. It just makes you want to ride it again. And then you slam into the brakes um, when you're in a kind of like... And then you're in like the orchestra hall. Well, before you do that, you slam into the brakes, which is kind of the backside of uh, of, of props of like um, thematic set walls. So as you would see like all the wooden, you know, just like oh, yeah. the, the wooden yeah. kind the of structures. The yeah, backdrops. the backdrops. Yeah. And then you finish with a visit to the orchestra, which then has a couple more references to Movie yeah. Park. And then the orchestra plays you out. 
and they close the curtains, the and their curtains open closed. into the station. And, they and you're are, just and you're just beaming like it is literally like everything you ear to ear. And then yeah, I, I I'm so excited about this ride. It's crazy. Like you really do a whole kind of like movie studio tour with all like the action packed stuff they that they slam in there. You know, in Hollywood, even. every person. I hope that there's people who work for like Universal Studios Hollywood, like major major corporate people, know about this ride. I hope people who, and they're honored by who it. work at Universal Studios Hollywood know that this exists because this is unreal it's gold it's so good and i um, fell in love with this ride watching youtube povs and i thought to myself like this might already be like my new favorite roller coaster i haven't even ridden it yet it is such and a then riding it and it was just even it was even better i think the biggest surprise riding it is seeing how much they pay homage to the park and how much they just create his own culture around like everything is canon in this park and in the ride and on the ride and then having those movie posters even if they stop the filming on the ride and then when you leave, this is my favorite, one of my favorite parts, I guess. There's so many favorite parts. <laughs> when you leave, they added a, um, you take the staircases down, you grab all your stuff, and then there is this oh, hallway. Oh, yeah, the hallway of blueprints. The hallways of blueprints, and it almost makes me emotional because it has the blueprints of the never-ending story being built. It has construction pictures of them building the Wild West sets and building the entrance to the park. Yeah. And it is just this timeline of Warner Brothers into Movie Park and all the concepts and all the blueprints for the dark rides for yeah it's just uh, it is it's so, so evident great that people they who love have themselves. been working at this park since have been there since before, before Warner, Brothers. Warner Brothers Warner Brothers and came they, in they and they have never out. stopped loving the park and yeah. the, some things that um, I think coast enthusiasts and theme park enthusiasts in general don't necessarily see into deep enough when they go to Newport Germany They'll be critical of the ride lineup, sure, um, you know, as, as many enthusiasts and, and theme park people do. But I don't think they can see the culture. Um, now, maybe more than ever, you can really sense it because now I feel like I never go there. This, this is, park I'm not alone in my, in my enjoyment of the park. You the know? trouble of building this awesome, hilarious, self-referential ride. There's not a lot of roller coasters that claim, can claim to have a sense of humor. That's why this ride is just, it's somehow greater than the sum of its parts, and all of the parts are so strong. Yeah, every, yeah, exactly. That it just feels too, this ride feels too good to be true. It feels like somebody's great idea that you just, it, it's, that it's just, it's just too lofty. It's too great. It's funny, when they announced this, like, uh, you know, this, like, themed roller coaster, family coaster that was going to be themed to studio touring, I was honestly a little bit It was like, I was, I was like, like, what are they going to do with this? With their roller like, coaster? what is this? And it was, to generic... Hollywood stuff. Little did we know. And I mean, they knocked out of park. They, they didn't have to purchase I, franchise. Mm-mm. They came up with their own franchises that are almost like comically inspired, but like not in a way where they're trying to rip off. They just did it in a way where it's, it's super just self. Yeah. It's just super self respecting. Yeah, it's honestly super, one of the greatest things I've ever seen. And I, there's, I feel like there's just there's just a few perfect roller coasters out there, and for me, this is one of them. Oh my god! Not only would I not, cha- <laughs> not only would I not oh change anything about this ride, I just feel like the the level of genius. I, like I need to meet these people. And I need to meet detail. I know. I want to. I want to see if we can get an interview with them next this, time. Because oh I, I just I, <laughs> I was I I can't even I could not. Find the words when I was the first time we wrote it. I was speechless. Now, if you're really curious to the progress, the process of how design is went and how much love went into it, um, YouTube channel Ride Review has a two hour documentary where they sit down with all the designers and they go through the design phases, what they were inspired by, how they did it, how they got out of the building from Ice Age and built this roller coaster in it. It is in German. I'm not sure if they have any subtitles yet or not. I would still. Have you check it out if, if you're really interested? Um, we'll watch it together, babe. Uh, it's yeah, one of those things. For me. Yeah, <laughs> it's one of those things where it's it's just really neat seeing how much love into it and how passionate they are about it. And um, it's just one of those victory laps, like you said, for Movie Park. I think all around, there is nothing greater than them respecting, honoring their past presence yeah, in the most fun, is, imaginary, creative way. It's they so great. Have cultivated their culture, and this is them. It's like they're taking their bow. They're collecting their flowers. Yeah, this is like Disney finally building a Mickey ride. This yeah. is like Move Park building a Move Park ride. Yeah. I would Absolutely. say that. And we're proud owners of a Move Park Studio Tour merch. We have yeah. uh, some really cool uh, like clapboard themed spirit sweatshirts. Spirit sweatshirts. Say like Studio Crew. 
Oh my god, yeah, film crew, film crew. Um, from stage yeah. one, uh, which is the, the gift store. I can't wait to write this again. Oh I my just god, that's I, so like every time. Like we're like the journey for this week, and yeah. I like I just it just I just couldn't write it enough. I could oh not god, get enough of this ride because it is just so grand. It is so glorious. That's awesome. Like it, it's just too good to be true. I can't believe it. I couldn't have asked for a better <laughs> for a better themed roller coaster experience. I will say it's one of the world's best family roller coasters. I mean, between Star Trek Fun Helsing and Movie Park Studio Tour, they have some of the strongest roller coasters out there. When That's it comes what I'm to saying. You have theming, a top three that is, is so strong. Very hard to beat. And then you have these two amazingly themed water rides. You have a really good simulator. And then you still have good other coasters. Like, you have your three really respectable family coasters, Nick Land, the Invert, yeah. the Big Wild Mouse, and uh, kid, no, the, the Junior Coaster from Facoma. And then you and have, got your two big and then you have wild the West Wild coasters. West, the Wild West Twins. Yeah, and, well, <laughs> if you really want to, you can even call it, like, the, the Wild West um, power quadruple because um, they also have a sidewinder. No, what is it called? A uh, it's called sidekick. It's a uh, the hush frisbee. The hush frisbee, which and is then high fall. awesome. High fall, and then your two big coasters mm-hmm. really make it into great areas. Overall, this park cannot be underrated more, in my opinion. It, it, I don't think people are necessarily this choosing most, to discover it. I think it's it. one of the most underrated parks in the world. Like, it is it's just, just I, I love it. It does not, and it wasn't always like that. So if you haven't been in recent years, I would. Highly encouraged to go back. I think it's one major thrill coaster away from being back on everybody's radar. And but to I, be fair, if you're a coaster enthusiast, if you want some of the most unique coaster experiences in the but world, yeah, you have to go anybody here. who likes roller coasters. There is no Mac even similar to Star Trek, yeah. which we prefer over Blue I Fire. Feel for like that Star reason. Trek is like still their bread and butter, you know, enthusiast coaster, and it's a solid ride. But like, as enthusiasts, you should also really be going for Fun Helsing. Yeah. I mean, one of the craziest indoor coasters. So fun, ben so Helsing wild. Helsing is their most intense roller coaster. <laughs> Hands down. And we always say it's more intense. The inversion. Uh, may, maybe, maybe MP Express, though. Still an SLC. It's yeah. quite intense, even if it runs really well. Uh, and, of course, then you have Move Park Studios, which you can't miss. But I just think this park has so much to offer. I go there and I'm like, oh my god, I gotta do this, gotta do this, gotta do this. You gotta hit everything, you gotta ride again. I am like running from ride to ride at this park. Just And I will say on our visit, the operations were really stellar. So shout out to the park for that. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, Move Park Germany, man. It is thank you. It's such an honor to be to be welcomed by them and for them to host us because like we I do want. I don't. I do want everyone to know that this is definitely uh, this review does not come from. Um, any sort of sponsorship. Yes, we were granted permission to enter the park as media, which we thank Move Park for very, very but we much. we were already simping for this park before. But as they... you can see throughout the vlog, <laughs> we are we are genuinely really excited, and we also are not afraid to say when shit's not running really well. Yeah. Like, in our vlog, we're not too happy with how Bandit ran. We didn't sugarcoat the Bandit We're thing. definitely not going to sugarcoat things. We're just really passionate about this park, and on all of our previous visits, we've always paid for tickets. Um, and when we paid for all the merch that we got on previous visits, too. Uh, yeah, we showed what up we, in a little what we saved yeah. in park tickets, we definitely blew on merch <laughs> for this park. Um, so I don't want anyone to think that that's why the review is so stellar. We just really love the park and the culture. And, and I think we're just part of movie park culture. It is definitely a Eastern Netherlands, uh, Western German, German border kind of like... When you go to the park, you see a lot of Dutch and German people Mm -hmm. um, kind of from that region because it is still kind of like a regional destination. It's kind of the regional Disney, you know? Um, But for all intents and purposes, it really is. It's up there. Uh, I really enjoy it. It's my favorite. It's my favorite, like, movie studio park. Like, more than. Universal Studios Florida, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> more than, even more I would, than... I would still say there are still, I mean, Disney Parks, Universal Parks still like above that when it comes to quality, um, because there's just so much budget. I mean, you can afford to build Transformers, which I really don't care for, but, you know, you can blow $100 million on that, and, you know, Movie Park wouldn't have $100 million around for but that, you know just, what I'm saying? I just, uh, there's just something about this park that gives me more than, like, than what Disney's Hollywood Studios I think can give one me. thing that, one way I would describe it is you can feel the love. Yeah. You're going to ride these things and be like, well, yeah, it's not Disney. Yeah, it's not Universal. And, like, you can't go into that expecting this little park in, in the farmlands in Germany to be that. But one thing you can sense is their self-love. This is a passion They're, project. They are so passionate. They are so happy. They get so excited with anything they can take on. Anytime they have any sort of budget to work with. And I think we need to thank Parques Renidos for that, too. Because Parques Renidos... Especially in the last couple of years, it's really, really put nurtured. a lot of 
power into the parks. Yeah. The Haven has really been able to do whatever they want. But we are like all these parks. You can really sense that like their old culture from even way before they were a big chain park is allowed to live through. And I think we need to thank Parques Unidos mm-hmm. for that, which is their their owner. We're going to visit some of the big parks in Spain later this year. And I will do a little road trip to just to France. My dad will be kind of fun. But um, long story short, passion, love. This park is so much more than just the attraction that they've got, which are really good. It's just like an overall culture that, um, you know, the people who, who were there all the way through are still there. And um, you can sense that. I think you can really sense and that. And this is a great underdog story and a great success story in general and it's one of those parks that i just cannot wait to see what they do next because they just really nail it every time everything that they've done in the last 10 years has been such a strong choice uh that like i know i just know what they do next is gonna feel like the exact right move to make i just can't wait to see what it is i'm so curious yeah i'm so curious because as of right now I mean, once they do, if they finish the Looky Look project, there isn't a whole lot left in the park that hasn't been recently completed or out unless yeah, they're, they're running, finally they're running out of existing stuff to flip. And there know? are still large buildings where they have mates in, in the back. There's a little bit more space they could potentially work with. Um, and there's, you know, they could always relaunch Time Riders. I mean, there's so much they could still do. And I really can't wait to see where they take all this. Yeah. for Germany, you are one of our favorite places. Every park, we love you. And we look forward to going back. Um, everyone listening, if you're still with us, because now the last couple minutes have We've definitely been, been a little, real hard. A little, a little, a little, a little, a little love letter to move forward. Not to be too <laughs> indulgent, but um, <laughs> definitely make sure to check out all the episodes. Check out our Minnesota Cup Purchase, Minnesota on Star Trek. Uh, we have the codesagains.com. We have an awesome article with all the new posters in there. Um, great stuff there as well. And then we have all of our other Europe um, trip information that is on there. We, of course, have our YouTube, YouTube channel now where we have all of our vlogs, so don't miss that. And, of course, if you're listening, leave us a rating. And we will catch you on the next episode. Thank you for listening. Bye. Bye.